So coming back to the third step, which is assigning of the values. Rohit, if you are not clear at any stage, please let me know because you are from a non Oracle background. So I'm concentrating or focusing more on you. Setup, financials, flexifields, key, values. Query by our value set Reliance GL company. Okay, I think earlier we have just entered the first value and where we left uh, from here. Okay, so Reliance company, Reliance Communications is the first company, and uh, there is something called that is the when we have when we have defined the chart of accounts we have assigned something called uh, flexible qualifier and even here there are certain qualifiers okay sorry uh, what happened it's not showing me the dollar budgeting and allow budgeting Okay, I don't know for some reason there is some issue with the form, but okay. So as far as this company is concerned, there are two qualifiers here: allow budgeting and allow posting. So that is where it is saying yes and yes. So when you set this allow budgeting, ideally by default, I mean in 100% of the cases we generally say allow budgeting and allow posting as yes. If you say allow budgeting or allow posting as no, so that means you will not be able to post any journals or if you will not be able to do any data entry using these company codes. Okay. I mean, if there is a scenario wherein you want to close the company, then you can actually put an end date or maybe you can disable those allow budgeting or allow posting. But otherwise, by default for all the companies, allow budgeting and allow posting will be set as yes. Okay. And second company code is 0 to Reliance Textiles. So this one 0 to Okay, for some reason looks like the, there's some issue with the form. It's not coming up, but this is what it is. When when I put my cursor here, it shows allow budgeting, and uh, there are the values yes or no. So I, uh, the first value is by, by default it is selected as yes. Allow budgeting is yes. Allow posting is also yes. And third company is Reliance Telecom. Throughout our uh, demonstration, I think I will be using a Reliance Communication. But uh, if you want to, I mean. Just for our uh, future references, I'm uh, creating all the five segment values. If you want, we can just uh, enter the first one and we can leave from here and then we can come back to the screen and uh, add the additional company values in the future. Zero four Reliance Telecom, Reliance Oil and Gas. Zero five is Reliance Software. Okay. And there is a last segment which is zero zero default. There is a special significance for that. So when I'm covering about the intercompany uh, journals functionality, I'll talk about that. But but for the time being, we'll just use this value of zero zero. Okay. So save this. And close this form. It says submitted one request to compile one value set hierarchies. Click on OK. And as I said, that uh, as it has triggered a concurrent request, go to View, Request, Find to check. So this request is still running. So, uh, Roy, just for your uh, information, like whenever you trigger a concurrent request, first it will be in a pending status, pending standby, and then uh, pending normal and then running normal and then completed normal okay so it's completed now okay okay yeah. so as this is completed so that means our setup is completed it is completed normal so no errors no issues 
in general, if it is completed normal, we need not even click and click on the output to check that. If it is an error, yes, you need to check the output. Okay, so we have created the values for the Reliance GL company. And as far as the operations department is concerned, as the values are already available, but I'll show you. Okay. Again, go to the same navigation setup, financials, flexi fields, key values. Just click on find. So these are all the existing values. Okay. Finance department. So different people have created so many different departments, HR department, something like that. You can you can you can create anything as a department it all depends on your business uh, scenario so say some people have uh, uh, say created something like east zone west zone north zone as different department and some people have created say sales as one department finances as another department and so on okay similarly put your cursor here and for the operations account that is our third segment also there are values which are available so this is where you actually specify your natural account so your salary account your stationary account your asset liabilities everything your accounts receivable accounts payable all the accounts are actually mentioned here there are so many different kind of accounts your clearing accounts payable account deferred account uh, so many other accounts okay so at any particular point in time you can come back to this particular screen and then add a uh, what do you call uh, a new value here so again from an implementation perspective this is a controlled uh, screen wherein if there is any requirement for adding up a new segment value that would come to a kind of an accounting controller and accounting controller after taking a proper approvals he'll come to this particular screen and add the value okay and uh, as far as the uh, account is concerned again these are the five major uh, segment qualifiers okay as as we have seen in the case of company we have seen allow budgeting and allow budgeting allow budgeting and allow posting as the only two segment qualifier but as far as the national account is concerned we got five segment qualifiers okay allow budgeting allow posting we have seen that again same thing if for any particular account if you say allow budgeting as allow posting allow budgeting as yes then you can enter budgets using that particular account if you say allow posting as yes you can use that particular account and post the journals using that account and it is very important to identify the account type whenever you are defining a, a national account so in general uh, in oracle erp all the uh, i mean it's not only oracle erp even in the normal accounting also all the accounts are in general categorized into five categories asset account expense account liability account revenue account or owner's equity account so whenever you are defining an account uh, you need to identify whether it's, it should be an asset account or liability account expense account or revenue account or an owner's equity account so asset account and liability account is nothing but a balance sheet account expense account and revenue account are nothing but the p and l accounts and generally ownership or stock holding generally this is uh, this particular uh, account type is used for something called retained earnings that we will see when i am defining a ledger as well as the uh, uh, share capital these are the only two accounts which wherein i have seen that uh, we use the account type as the owner equity but otherwise all other accounts generally either fall under assets or liability or expense or revenue okay and there there is a in, inbuilt functionality within the system uh, for the asset and liability expense and revenue separate functionality for expense and revenue and uh, asset and liability so that is the reason why once an asset once an account is created when you are assigning an account type you should be careful to select it a proper account type once you create a particular account and you select an account type as an asset you start using that particular account and then a later point in time you realize that no 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 it should not be, be an asset account it should be an expense account you should not come back to this particular screen and directly change it from asset to expense system will allow you to change but from an implementation perspective or from a production support perspective that will cause a major issues in the background so whenever in any project production support project implementation project if you see such kind of a scenario wherein uh, an account is created with say account type as say asset and you have entered some transactions and later point in time user try to change it from uh, uh, account type of asset to expense then you need to immediately raise an oracle sr oracle will give you some kind of a backend scripts to update certain tables okay any questions here 
so Arvind, these options, right? So segment qualifiers. So for the balance and segment, I think we had only two qualifiers. For mm -hmm. accounting segment, we had five. Yeah. So is this is this coming from the um, flexible qualifiers uh, um, that we have selected in the it, accounting structure? Exactly, exactly. Because like for the company segment, we have selected the flexible qualifier as balancing segment. That's the reason why when we are defining your uh, segment values for the company, it is showing only allow budgeting and allow posting. But whereas for the national account, that is operations account, we have selected the uh, flexible qualifier as national account. So that is the reason why it is showing these five segments. Okay. If you remember, that's the reason why before I completed the chart of accounts, when I was uh, uh, trying to create the segment values for the company, it was not even showing those two segments because at that particular stage, it did not, it do not understand that uh, Reliance GL company is a company segment. That's the reason why I, I skipped that and uh, completed the chart of account segment and then uh, came back to the screen. Oh, okay, okay, okay. got it. Yeah. Okay. That is the reason why your BR 100 should also be in a proper uh, sequence. Hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, so this is for the account segment and uh, reconcile. Uh, there is something called uh, we will not be getting to do that reconciliation functionality, but just at a high level, there is something called GL reconciliation functionality. If you want to use the this is different from the uh, your sub ledgers to general ledger uh, reconciliation functionality. So there is something called uh, uh, reconciler uh, uh, functionality within the GL. If you want to use that particular functionality, you need to enable that account as the reconciled uh, uh, account. So you need to say from no to yes. Otherwise, you can leave it as no. And the next one is third party control account. When you say third party control account as no, so that means this particular account can be used across all the modules. That is your general ledger as well as the sub ledger modules. Okay. Again, Rohit, uh, for your understanding, whenever I use the word sub ledger, I'm talking about AP, AR, fixed assets, cash management, and all those are called sub ledgers. So all modules other than the GL in general are called sub ledgers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when I say third party control as uh, 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 no, you can use this particular account in any of the modules. But if I say third party control as uh, there are a couple of options here. If I say third party control as yes. So that means in general, this particular account can be used only in the sub ledgers. That is your AP and AR. Generally, you set this third party control as yes for accounts payable uh, liability account or uh, accounts receivable uh, receivable account. OK, and if you say the third party control account as say uh, supplier, so that means that particular account can be used only in AP. So you can set that for say accounts payable uh, liability account so that even by mistake also user should not be able to select that particular account in AR or some other module. And if I select to say third party control account as customer, so that means that can be used only in AR module. And if I say third party control account as restrict manual generals, then that means it can be used across any modules AP and AR, but you will not be able to enter manual general entries within the GL using that particular account. Okay. So that completes the uh, segment value. So we have completed the chart of accounts. Uh, we have associated the uh, qualifiers for that, and we have even created the segment values for those chart of accounts. Okay. And uh, roll up groups. So I have highlighted in yellow. So when I say I, I highlighted in yellow. So we'll get into this particular functionality uh, when we are talking about the uh, say summary group. So we'll not get into that for the time being. So that's the reason why it's on yellow color. Because if I get into all these things, then again, you will get confused with our uh, current flow. Account aliases also, I'll get into that a bit later. Cross validation rules a bit later, chart of accounts mapping. So wherever it's in yellow, I'll come to those bit later. That may not be required from our ledger perspective also, okay? So remember, this is the uh, BR100 for the entire GL module, not just for the ledger setup. So that's the reason why wherever it's highlighted in yellow, I'll come to those points at a bit later point in time, okay? Okay, now coming back to our uh, original discussion. I said ledger is a combination of chart of account, calendar, currency, and the sub ledger account convention. Okay, we have completed the chart of account structure. Okay, we have completed the segments, we have completed the segment uh, values. Okay, and next thing is calendar. Okay, what is the calendar? So, what is the accounting calendar? Again, accounting calendar can be from January to December or uh, or it could be June to July, October to September, whatever it is. Okay. So in our current case, uh, we are building this particular uh, org structure for Reliance Company, where 
which has got its major business in india and uh, so we will create a calendar following the india accounting uh, uh, calendar so india accounting calendar starts from what is the month what is the india fiscal year or financial year april march april to march okay so we will create one calendar with april to march okay so use that navigation uh, setup financials calendar accounting setup financials calendar accounting okay there are a lot of calendars which are available in the system so if you want to query up for those existing uh, calendars f11 control f11 okay but if you want to create your own calendar then just put your cursor here and click on plus okay i'll say reliance calendar reliance india calendar so reliance financial year or uh, the india financial year fiscal year starts from april okay so i'll start as prefix as april and uh, what is the period type so what what is the number of months which you want in this particular calendar year okay so i will say okay so before we get into this uh, period type okay there is a, a, a period type screen uh, we'll get to the close this form So there are so many different period types which are entered by so many different people so what we'll do is we'll create one period type so when i when you say period type so in this particular screen you need to specify what is the number of periods for your calendar whether you want to go for 12 periods uh, whether you want to go, go for 15 periods or whether there are some companies which which uh, which can go even for 15 periods in a fiscal year so uh, for those companies the calendar period will not be total 30 days it could be say 20 days something like that okay so we will go for something called 13 periods so when i say 13 periods it will be a 12 uh, normal periods plus one adjustment period okay so what is an adjustment period so generally uh, for every financial year at the end of the financial year you can have one adjustment period so adjustment period period is the period wherein if you want to enter some kind of an adjustments you can use the adjustment period functionality uh, it's not mandatory that you need to have one adjustment period per financial year you can have more than one adjustment uh, period for financial year or you can have one adjustment for financial year and adjustment periods are used only in the general ledger you cannot use the adjustment periods in the sub ledgers okay what we'll do is we'll go for the uh, 13 periods i'll say reliance period type And select it as physical so i'll explain you the significance of physical nearby reliance period type Reliance India calendar. So our calendar year starts from April, and period type is Reliance period type, and uh, year is okay. So we are following a physical year. So what we need to do is so when you say physical year, our financial year is from April to March. Okay, so when is our financial year ending? March 2018. Am I right? our current financial year yes. hello yes yes okay yes, yes, yes. so that is what you need to mention the year so the ending year of our physical year okay 2018 and this is 2018 uh, april is the first uh, it's in first quarter right every financial year is divided into four quarters so first three quarters falls under q1 uh, so next three periods falls under q2 and so on okay and then period number is first period and what is the dates first april 2017 to uh, 
30 April 2017. See here you can see the period name is automatically defaulted to April 18. That is April hyphen 18. So when during the data entry, whenever you are because you are following the fiscal year concept. So whenever during a data entry, whenever you are um, in the data entry key, screens, wherever it asks you to select the period, if you select April 18, so that means it is falling under any of these dates. Okay. So similarly for but, uh, yeah. No, but ideally it should be April 17, right? Because we are we are using that's what I'm saying. No, we are using the fiscal year concept properly. If, uh, if you are using a fiscal year concept, this is how it should be. Remember first. Okay, let me complete this. Let me complete at least three rows. So uh, as if, uh, for those companies wherein the financial year goes into two financial uh, two calendar years, then you ideally should use the the end of the uh, month in which that particular financial year ends. So March 2018 is ending in 2018. So you should use 2018. So the naming condition will be something like April 18, May 18, June 18, July, August, September, October, November, December 18. Okay, and then. When you say January 18, it will be proper January 18. That is 1st Jan 2018 to 31st Jan 2018 and so on. But if you feel that, I mean, this is how it will be used by the business users, but it is still in our control. But if you feel that it is still confusing for you, for your training purpose, I can change it to this way. Okay. I mean, this kind of scenario arises only in those companies wherein a financially uh, the, uh, the financial year gets into two calendar years. So in this example, our financial year is getting into 2017 and 2018 calendar year. So that is the reason why we should use that naming convention. But if you feel it's a confusing for you from a training perspective, I can go ahead with this. Okay. Okay. This is the second quarter, fourth uh, fourth period. Uh, 1st July 2017 to 31st July 2017. I change it to July 17. August. September. So, uh, Rohit, again for your uh, information, if you want to copy the value from the above field, the shortcut is Shift F5. Okay. So, obviously, here we should not be using a copying because here the values will change. October uh, 2018 quarter. This will be third quarter. Period number seven. First October 2017. Uh, 30th October 2018 to October 17. Okay. Press down arrow, or you can directly put your cursor here, or just press down arrow. November. Shift F5. Shift F5. Uh, this is third quarter. So I'm just uh, creating the uh, calendar period for one financial year. And then we can continue with our next steps. Uh, yes, November 2017. December. January. Oops. Uh, 
if you do shift f6 then it is going to uh, copy the entire row i think i uh, by mistake i did shift f6 so this will be under 4 10 change the values first january 2018 to 31st january 2018 jan 18 february 2018 fourth quarter 11th month uh, 29th february 2018 you, you need not worry whether uh, uh, you need not remember whether it's 29 days or 28 days so i entered 29 days day must be between first and last day of the month there is already a control so that means we need to select 28 February, March 2018, 4th, 12th, 1st March 2018 to 31st March 2018. Okay. And last period, as I said, we will have we have 13 periods. So the last period will be adjustment period. We'll use the naming convention as ADJ adjusting period 2018. It still falls under fourth quarter, 13 period adjustment period the functionality of the adjustment period is you need to check this checkbox and adjustment period should always overlap with any of the existing dates so in general adjustment period will be last day of the financial year so if you kind if you want to do any kind of an uh, year end adjustments you can use the adjustment period instead of using any of these other periods so that it will be even easy for your reporting purpose to find out what exactly are the I mean, you can run a report just on the adjustment period to find out all the adjustment whatever you have entered but i have uh, rarely seen uh, clients who are using this adjustment period functionality even though available in the system they generally enter all their adjustment in the last period that is in this case march 2018 okay so once you it is mandatory that you need to check this checkbox of adjusting for this adjustment period so once you save the changes close the form then you will get a message do you want to validate the currently displayed calendar or all your calendar so i want to validate this calendar so click on current so once you click on this current at your calendar validation concurrent request is triggered in the background now you need to check the whether the request is completed normal go to view request find see it is completed in warning so let us see why it is completed in warning what is the error message as i said that earlier like if the request is completed in error then you need to deploy to take an action if it is completed in warning check the output and if needed you need to take an action if not needed you can ignore that when you click on view output it opens the output in the browser window okay so what it says it says the following periods have date gaps before october 17 and november uh, 17 there is some gap so it is checking those things now we can go back to our calendar and check what exactly is missing there f11 bring up our calendar control f11 okay it says there is some problem between first uh, between october 2017 and november 2017 okay can you guess what is the problem here october is 31 days exactly okay save this now close this again it will ask for the validation click on current trigger concurrent request again got triggered go to the view request click on find see now it is complete this is the next request which got triggered. now it is completed normal so when it is completed normal you need not click on view output even if you click on view output it will say no validations found no violations found sorry no violations found so it is checking so many different things what is the dates which you have used what is the naming convention which you have used it is checking a couple of things and if it finds that something is wrong then it is going to throw an error, uh, appropriate error message so especially in any implementation setup uh, things like you need to ensure that these requests are completed normal and you need to take appropriate action then and there itself instead of seeing any practical challenges going forward once you start using the uh, the ledger or the calendar okay
so any any questions so far and rohit just for your information uh, if you do not remember the entire navigation okay what will the shortcut would be just say control l it will pull up all the forms and uh, say if you want to go to the calendar screen just say percentage calendar percentage click on find so it will at least bring you to that particular screen so uh, this is the screen calendar okay so that is the one shortcut of uh, if you do not know the exact uh, navigation you can do that and there is something called top 10 list so say take an example if you always go to this particular uh, screen regularly segment value screen you can pull it to the top 10 screen so that means like it will be always in the top 10 screen uh, whenever you come to this particular responsible you can directly click on this when you click on this it will take it directly take you to that particular form or you can even press the number one whatever the number which is assigned here if you just press one on your keyboard it will open up that particular form oh, okay. because like uh, it's uh, it's not possible to remember uh, the navigation of each and every uh, what you call menus like even i have been working on this for actually since last 10 years i don't remember each and every navigation so wherever i do not remember navigation i just do a control l and then go by this in any uh, in a, in my day to day work okay so we have completed the uh, calendar part so here you can create a calendar for uh, uh, any number of periods so what i did is i created a calendar for one financial year so in future again you can go back to the same screen and you can add the period so generally uh, so in my uh, current uh, project we generally uh, create the calendar for uh, next five years so like uh, at the end of our current financial year again we so now in our current system we have created calendar up to 2022 so at, at the end of our current uh, financial year we create again calendar for 2023 again at the end of uh, next year we create the calendar for 2024 something like that but it is not mandatory that you need to have a calendar for five years you need to at least have a calendar for the end of current financial year okay so we'll not get into this okay there is something called a transaction calendar there are two kinds of calendar one is the accounting calendar and another one is the transaction calendar generally i have not seen any clients who are using this transaction calendar functionality in the transaction calendar functionality you can set up that these are my business days and these are my non business days so and you can set up some kind of a restrictions that in non business days nobody be nobody should be able to do a data entry so non business days will be your saturday and sunday something like that but i have not seen any client using this particular uh, functionality the reason being you, you you i mean most of the companies are global they work uh, uh, throughout the globe and uh, in some in some countries uh, say take an example middle east sunday is a working day uh, uh, friday and saturday are the public holidays uh, so so in all other countries say friday is a working day but in middle east friday is a public holiday so something like that so you know to take into consideration all those practical challenges nobody uh, uses this uh, transaction calendar and uh, as far as the defining of the uh second uh, next c for your okay as far as the ledger is concerned chart of accounts is now ready to be used calendar is not here, now ready to be used and next one is the currency okay so as far as the currency is concerned you need not uh, create uh, currencies in the system Cur currencies are already readily available in the system in any when as soon as you go for any implementation project as soon as you implement the uh, the the vanilla oracle software the, all the currencies are available in the system so oracle provides all the currencies which are used across the world okay in this screen so if you do not know the navigation percentage currency find so currencies go to this particular screen so do a f11 control f11 so it will show you all the currencies which are available in the system if you want you can create your own currencies but it's not necessary because oracle has provided all the currencies so say query for say inr currency is already available so euro currency is available usd canada okay so this is the screen wherein you specify like what is my currency code that is three digit currency code this is uh, designed by your uh, iso international standard organization and uh, <coughs> this is the country which issues this particular currency and this is the symbol and this is the precision so when you say precision 
for the time being uh, forget about extended precision so when you say precision you can use up to only two decimals whenever you are doing a data entry so you can say 200.22 200.44 something like that you cannot say 200.223 something like that okay there are some countries wherein the precision is zero so do you know that countries any idea <coughs> that is they do not have any kind of a lower uh, denomination other than uh, one everything is in uh, whole number japan is one such example so if you query for japan you can see precision is zero in japan's everything is in yen you can say 10 yen 20 yen 30 yen you cannot say 30.44 yen something like that so there are a couple of such countries <coughs> wherein the precision is zero and uh, japan is one such country so if you query with the countries where the precision is zero so there are a lot of other countries also but the major countries are uh, japan italy these are the countries wherein the uh, precision is zero okay so as far as our uh, ledger is concerned our functional currency is uh, inr so we'll concentrate on inr so inr issuing debtor is india precision is two and uh, this is the name of the currency indian rupee so the currencies are already available you need not do anything okay and the next c is subledger accounting convention okay Oracle has provided a uh, seeded uh, subledger accounting convention. That is, the uh, subledger accounting is a layer in R12 wherein all the accounting is determined by the subledger accounting rules. So, for our argument's sake, for the time being, we, we are not making any changes to the Oracle provided subledger accounting rules. So, if you are not making any changes to the Oracle provided subledger accounting rules, we can use the Oracle provided subledger accounting convention, which is nothing but standard accrual. So, that's the name of the Oracle provided subledger accounting convention. So when we get into the uh, say AP and AR, so I'll give as part of this my training sessions, I'll take one example wherein I'll customize the subledger accounting rule. And that's where that's when we try to change the subledger accounting convention rule from standard accrual to some other custom rule. But for the time being, we'll use the stress, sub, uh, Oracle seeded provided uh, Oracle seeded subledger accounting convention which is standard accrual okay now we got all the four c's chartered account calendar currency and subledger accounting convention then i think now we can start with our ledger setup so any other questions before we proceed with our ledger setup so ledger setup starts from like I have one question on the subledger accounting rules. Like, what does it do? I mean, do we have a? Is it a mandatory set of what we need to do on this? Okay, or? okay. So from an Oracle perspective, Oracle has already provided the standard uh, accrual subledger accounting convention rule. So, if you are not planning to make any changes to your business rules, if you are planning to use whatever Oracle has given, then you need not make any changes. It will be just available when you are creating a ledger. It will be available in the drop down. Select that. That's it but based on your business requirement if you want so i'll give an example okay whenever you create an uh, uh, say ap invoice okay uh, the general entry would be ap expense account that is a stationary account will be debited uh, and liability account will be credited okay and the standard accrual subledger accounting rules which is already provided by oracle says that expense account should be derived from so and so place liability account should be derived from so and so place so there are certain places wherein you can enter these accounts and from a data entry perspective user just uh, whenever creating an ap invoice he selects the vendor to whom he is making a payment he selects the vendor he selects the date amount and a particular uh, uh, expense account code combination and saves it that's it and uh, in the background systems create the accounting entry of your expense account will be debited and liability account will be created how system can generate that particular entry because there are certain seeded subledger accounting rules available in the system but if you do not want to use those seeded rules, if you want to make a changes to your rules based on your different business requirement, then you can go for changes to the standard accrual rules. Okay. In, okay. In, so, in, in a real implementation project, generally uh, uh, we will use the standard accrual subledger accounting uh, convention. We will use that. We'll copy all the rules and we'll make a slight changes to couple of the rules. So maybe I can say in any implementation project, it all depends. If it's a medium to, uh, if it's a medium, uh, uh, co uh, medium complexity kind of a uh, implementation, then I can say around 
uh, maybe 10 percent uh, will be the customizations to the uh, sla rules if it's a complex then maximum maybe it could be say 15 or 20 percent we will not go for 100 percent of the change uh, customization of the sub ledger accounting rules yeah go ahead Rohit. you are asking something okay uh i mean based on what i understand like these are the rules which are created by default by the system uh behind the scenes exactly uh, exactly okay okay so in a norm generally like all the oracle uh, i mean so all the oracle seeded subledger accounting rules are proper like they, they follow the proper accounting conventions or accounting standards but for some business reason which is uh which is not i mean like uh, the business requirement is uh, kind of a weird or like it's a kind of a peculiar thing which is not being handled by the standard oracle provided subledger accounting rule that's where you actually tweak the rule to meet your business requirement got it okay so as i said that like i'll i'll take one example of tweaking of the subledger accounting rule uh, uh when i talk about uh, i think ar i think for ar there is one example for that okay okay i think we currencies we are done uh okay there is something called uh rate types again i'm falling in a kind of a sequence uh couple of these things are being used when we are actually creating a ledger i mean at a high level i said uh, as i said that for ledger we got only these four things charter account calendar currency and subledger accounting convention but there are certain fields wherein you need to again pop in uh, these uh, some of these things like rate types currencies and other stuff okay so that is the reason why i'm going in order so there is something called rate types so what is a rate type We'll go to this rate type definition. So if you do not remember the navigation, navigation is already mentioned in my document, but if you do not remember the navigation, say rate percentage type percentage and click on find conversion rate type F11 control F11. If you say F11 and control F11, if it doesn't bring any values, so that means there are no values in the screen. But if it bring something so that means there are some values already created in the system by somebody else okay so there are actually uh, we'll talk about there are a lot of uh, period types which were created by so many different uh, people we'll talk about uh, three major rate types one is the spot rate type and other one is the corporate rate type and third one is the period average rate type okay First, we'll talk about the spot or corporate rate type. So the rate types are actually kind of a placeholders which will hold the exchange rates. So there is some other screen wherein the, you specify your exchange rate. So in any in any uh, kind of a uh, complex uh, business organization, you do not enter general entries only in you do not enter transactions only in one currency. You enter the transactions in multiple currencies. Okay, going back to my running notes. So in Oracle, there is something called entered currency or transaction currency and functional currency or ledger currency. Okay, so when you say functional currency, uh, sorry, entered currency or transaction currency, so the currency in which the transaction is entered functional currency or ledger currency is the currency associated with this but with your ledger so in our current example we are creating a ledger for reliance uh, uh, group so our functional currency or the ledger currency or the reporting currency is inr but there are a lot of business reasons wherein you want to create your transactions in some currency other than the inr so reliance is uh, uh, say to take an example reliance is doing some business for a for some customer in say us so us obviously they want an invoice in usd currency so you create a transaction or an invoice or a journal entry in gl with an invoice currency or a transaction currency or entered currency you can use any name in usd so there should be somewhere in this but at the end of the day all your accounting entries should get converted to your functional currency or ledger currency so there should be some place in the screen where uh, there is, should be some place in the erp where you need to specify what is the exchange rate between usd to inr okay obviously the exchange rate uh, differs on a day to day basis i mean if you go to a stock market or a money market exchange rate uh, differs by every uh, minute or a second but that is not uh, practically possible to get the exchange rate uh, from the stock exchanges uh, per minute basis so generally most of the clients what they do is they get this exchange rate feed or exchange rate interface or exchange rate kind of a file from an external system and they integrate with oracle 
so in our current client we are getting this exchange rates from bank of america so bank of america provides so in our current client uh, our functional currency is usd okay bank of america provides for us the exchange rate file that is exchange rate between usd to all other major currencies where we are doing a business in a kind of a flat file and it send it to us so we get the particular flight uh, file a day before so that all the exchange rates are available for the next day so today is what 9th of september so for all the 9th of september exchange rate for 9th of september uh, we'll be getting the exchange rate for 9th of september on 8th september night so by 8th september night a file will be interfaced from your bank of america into our oracle system and it gets processed and all the exchange rates will be available so next day morning that is on 9th of september once the users start doing a data entry they can use any currency as the entered currency system will automatically convert it into functional currency of inr so all these exchange rates are stored in a in, in a uh, period rate type so that period rate type is nothing but spot or it could be corporate so for some reason if you are using two different sources okay for getting in your exchange rate one is from a bank of america and uh, other is from say chase bank or some other bank then you can use uh, two different uh, period rate types and you can store those exchange rate but whatever i have seen is any client generally go for one source of uh, getting exchange rate so there could be a uh, what do you call specific business reason if they are going for more than one source of getting a exchange rate so any questions here so ideally speaking there is no difference between spot or corporate or daily exchange rate or nothing right it's just naming convention no? exactly it's a naming convention it's just only placeholder where in i mean uh, with a with a with a period rate type of spot you can get the feed from bank of america you can get the feed from stock exchanges money market or from chase bank or from any other bank similarly with the name of corporate you can get from any name it's just only placeholder so if you go to the exchange rate screen you will understand that so if I just go to daily rate screen, okay. So if you query for say uh, F11, F11, say USD to INR. <coughs> so here somebody has already entered a date for August with a type of corporate, and this is the exchange rate. One USD to INR is 65, and this is the inverse of that. That is the reverse of that. Okay so here you if you want you can use usd to inr with the same date of say 31st of august 2017 with uh, exchange rate type that is conversion rate type of spot and use some other exchange rate maybe 66 okay so this is just a placeholder you need to have one particular placeholder or, re or period conversion rate type under which you can store your exchange rate so you need to take a decision whether you want to use a spot rate or whether you want to use a corporate rate. I mean, when you say spot or corporate rate, just the con naming convention. You can even say Reliance period uh, uh, conversion rate. Type. You can even create your uh, such a Reliance period conversion rate type and you can start using that. Okay. But it's a placeholder to store the exchange rates. And as far as the exchange rates are concerned, generally nobody will be coming to the screens and manually entering that in any kind of a uh, client environment. Generally, you get that feed from the bank. Maybe in India, you can get that kind of feed from, say, ICICI Bank or Access Bank or some other bank. Okay. That's about the uh, rate types. And uh, rate types, whatever you've seen, rate types, example is say spot or corporate. And the next screen is about this, talking about the entering of the rates. So in any implementation project, in generally exchange rates comes as a feed from any financial institution or any other service provider. So in this example, as I explained, Bank of America or Chase Bank. And uh, for the time being, I'll skip skip these two general sources and general categories, which are not required from the, uh, what do you call, it? I'll put this in yellow so that we can come back to these things which are not required from a ledger perspective. Okay. And uh, uh, reversal uh, criteria. So for the time being, I'll just show you this reversal criteria, but I'll explain you about this functionality uh, when I'm talking about the journals. Uh, the reason why I'll be talking about this at a high level is basically now we need this particular uh, thing to be created so that we can use this. This is one of the field when you are creating a ledger. So that's the reason why you need to have a, a default general reversal criteria i'll quickly go to that screen create this and then we'll start with the lecture okay 
okay so that's the uh, prerequisites and uh, then we need to start with the uh, so first thing is before you even start with the ledger you need to create a legal entity and then you can associate the legal entity to the ledger okay. i think it's already 11 so uh, we'll continue uh, the the, ma the main steps from uh, tomorrow so any other uh, questions before we end i think if you could send this uh, br100 uh, it would be great like oh, yeah like some time yeah, because yeah this needs a lot of practice i believe and i'll certainly have more questions yeah yeah that's true okay so once the the uh, the entire i mean i can share it today uh, but you you can better appreciate all other uh, because there are a lot of other tabs within this uh, br100 so you can better appreciate once the entire setups are completed and once the entire setups are completed uh, I require you all to practice uh, these things. So there are two things, whether you want to do a practice of setups plus the data entry or whether you want to do only a practice of the data entry. If you want to do practice of only data entry, then you know not, I mean, you can just use my ledger and my legal entities and you can start doing a data entry. But if you want to do a practice of the both uh, setups as well as the data entry, then you need to again create your own versions of the ledgers based on this, uh, uh, what do you call uh, the BR100. So the naming convention, if you want to practice on the uh, setups is, uh, I prefer this naming convention. As you know that I have already created the user IDs for all those users. So for the ledger name of say Reliance Communications, or say Reliance INR ledger, you can use RD. If Rohit want to create that, just use the naming convention RD underscore uh, Reliance INR ledger. Say Pratap wants to create that, then he needs to use PN, something like that. So that it will be proper whenever you go to the next steps, whenever you're picking up the values, you understand who, whether you are picking up the values which are created by me or whether you are picking up the values which are created by you so that you can better appreciate uh, the flow okay i prefer you follow this naming convention yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so uh, uh, whether everybody uh, uh, try to log into the system and uh, uh, were you able to open the forms yes sir Okay, that's uh, Niranjan. Uh, what about Rohit and uh, Pradeep? Uh, yes, I. Uh, it's it's working. So. What about I, I did not try. I did not try it, uh, Arvind. I'll try it today and update it tomorrow. Okay. What about Pratap? It's working, Arvind. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll share this. Uh, uh, what do you call this? Users uh, spreadsheet. The BR hundred. Okay. And then we'll continue with the uh, the legal entry setup from tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Bye. Hey, Arvind. Uh, you recorded this session, right? Yes. Uh, you can share that also. That would be good, right? Sure. Sure. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.